So now we will explore a little bit of unsupervised classification. And the unsupervised classification is sort of the opposite of the supervised classification. We don't have training data for unsupervised. So spectral classes are grouped first and then categorized into clusters. So they're called um, self-taught algorithms because they don't use the set of labeled uh, training data. Um, so the order, the workflow usually is this one. We assemble features with numeric properties in which to find clusters. This will be like our training data. This is pretty much just the image um, and we'll see how you get its training data from the image. Then we select and instantiate a cluster, which is you know, similar. Instead of using the word classifier here, we're going to use the word clusterer because um, you know, for unsupervised classification, now we're going to move into ee.clusterer object, which is the language that Earth Engine uses. Um, but we could also call this a e classifier. Then we train this cluster with the training data that we have generated here which is not labeled by classes. Then we apply the cluster to the same, which is like classifying the image. And after that, then we can label um, the clusters. Then we can define, okay, from these results, which classes um, are we drawing from this? This is just an example. We'll be working with k-means, uh, which is one type of clusterer, but there are uh, different others as well. And this is just an example. So here, for example, in the spectral space, this is just hypothetical. We have you know, band one and two, and these are the pixels. In the spectral space, some pixels get closer together because you know, they're similar. And these will get uh, clustered together. And specific, specifically with k-means, um, you know, in the k-means process, k is just the number of clusters you want to uh, have. So in our case, we use four because we've been working four classes, but if we have more than four, and it draws centroids at these um, clusters and adjusts, adjusts it in an iterative process um, until um, it's you know, more in the, in the centroid of, of the space and it calculates the mean um, of these pixels. So it's just looking, okay, this looks like a grouped um, set of Pixels, so we will call this cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, and so on. Here, are the steps will first generate the training data. So we won't collect anything. So unsupervised, we don't have labeled uh, training data. What we'll do, we'll just straight sample the image, and for that, we we'll use um, the sample function. So it's different than the sample regions because Previously, we wanted to sample specifically at the points that we have collected. Now we use the sample function, which uh, samples the image at random locations. Um, the region here, we have to specify a region for uh, from where to sample. So here we're going to use the image footprint. So length set is our variable. We just do dot geometry, which grabs the the footprint of that image as a geometry. And we also need to define the number of pixels we want to sample. So in this case, the example is going to use a thousand pixels um, to sample from. So it's a lot of pixels, right? We had a hundred training points for the supervised classification. Now you're going to say we want a thousand pixels um, of information. And that will be our training data. Then we choose the cluster and train it. So again, there are different options here. Uh, this is under the ee.clusterer object, and we work with the k-means for now, and we use the train function as we've seen, and then we classify the image as well. And you can see they has different colors. I'm going to talk about this later. So we can go ahead and work with this checkpoint. This is the last checkpoint. So I'll go back here to the book repository. I'll click here F21C. And yes, I'll abandon changes. So now we can scroll down. We have all the other classifications as well in this script. And instead of working here, because this is the last section, I'll just use um, the checkpoint. 
So as I said, now we have unsupervised classification. Here we are making a training data set, so it doesn't have any uh, labeled points with the classes. So we just sample pixels randomly. So here lens had sample. We have the image footprint, 30 minutes, uh, 30 meters as the scale and a thousand pixels. The style scale property is just how Earth Engine um, is doing the sampling, so it doesn't um, run out of memory. I'm using a tile scale of eight. So if I, I can show uh, sample, it has this tile scale as an argument for other functions as well. But here, tile scale is a scaling factor used to reduce aggregation tile size. So this enables competitions. Uh, it prevents uh, competitions to run out of memory. So you can use like two, four, eight, sixteen. I'm using eight here because I think it's sufficient. So it's just the way everything is doing the aggregations um, to prevent um, uh, to prevent running out of memory. Here I am um, selecting the cluster. So I'm going to use the K means, which is this one, Weka K means. I need to define the number of clusters I want. So I'm just going to use four because we have um, been working with four classes. And I use the train function here and provide this training data set, which is just the pixels. I'm going to just print here this training feature collection so you can see. And here, Instead of doing dot classify, we use dot cluster, right? Which is just the classification, but unsupervised classification. And then I add that to the map. You can see that I'm not defining, I'm not using the same color palette as the supervised classification. So I'm not using these parameters because in this case, we don't know which class is zero, which class is one, which class is two. Or, or three, right? We have four, four clusters, but not necessarily the forest will be zero or developed to be will be one. So it doesn't make a lot of, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to have um, those colors assigned to the, the color, to the class codes we have defined. So what I'm using here is a random visualizer. So this function just creates a uh, colors for each of the pixel values we have. So random colors for the pixel values um, we have. And I'm adding that to the map. So I'm gonna turn off here the geometry imports really quick. Let's see, turn this off. And just to show here before we look into the map, for features, we have all the this information. So we don't have the class information, but we have all the band information from the image. Just to show that we don't have that label like class zero, class one, because we don't use training, label training data um, for unsupervised. And then here at the bottom, we can see this classification, which won't have intuitive colors like we've seen for, like we have defined for them enforced in part. So we can look for these four different clusters. So one is the green and it seems to be water. So the model also selects water as one cluster. It seems to me it's classifying this um, water body here, this lake as well as green. Let me turn this off. There is also, let me see if those water bodies that we saw here close to Milan are being classified correctly. It seems they are. Yeah, so it's also doing a good job here classifying these water bodies that we have seen. These reservoirs or something. Then the other cluster that it seems to me to be more or less the forested areas here. I think it's 
probably also related to being mountainous. But we can see one of the clusters here are these areas of mountainous in forests. And then the other colors are the dark brown and the pink. We can see that the dark brown seems to be these croplands that look more dry. I don't know if I can say this word, but they're not you know, as green as the other croplands. So for example, here is very brownish. These ones are very greenish. So it's separating instead of you know, having just one herbaceous class like we tried to do. This one is clustering to maybe um, active croplands and dry or inactive croplands. And that's it, that's four classes, right? So for the city, for example, it's grouping it into, it's a mix of the brownish and pinkish. So we cannot like clearly separate the city from from these Scotland areas. Maybe one thing I'm curious to try right now is doing five to see if you're gonna pick the city as another cluster. So I'm just gonna change here to five, five clusters and see the results. So it kept here the water more or less the forest. There is a black class now or cluster, but it's it seems all mixed together, right? <laughs> I don't think it. Yeah, the unsupervised. I don't think it's doing a good job of separating between developed and the croplands or the bunches. So yeah, this unsupervised classification is good when you don't have training data, right? And um, sometimes it works really well depending on the landscape. I think this is a challenging landscape because we have a lot of croplands and they vary, I guess, in their um, cycle. So this might be too much for the unsupervised classification. But, um, and you can extract much more, many more um, pixels this way than you know manually drawing points for the supervised classification. But um, I also wanted to uh, mention that for the supervised classification, we worked with points, right? We collected points, but it, we can also collect polygons. Actually, you know, when you draw a polygon, you extract much more information because you can extract more pixels at once than just doing individual points. Um, for this particular exercise, we just did points, you know, for learning purposes, but um, um, I do advise trying to create polygons as a training data as well and comparing that um, with the results that we have. So yeah, we have explored the supervised classification and unsupervised classification. And now that we have the supervised classification, we could go here, inspect each of these colors, for example, um, here the brownish colors, I could use the inspector tool, click it. And I have sort of like a class code here. So this is cluster number three. And I could assign different colors if I wanted. So I could take a note that, you know, this brownish um, cluster are these, I don't know, mature croplands. So I could use the number three for that. And assign a label. I could also check the, the black color. <coughs> Excuse me, it has number four, um, and so on. And then make um, define visualization parameters that make sense. So we've talked about supervised and unsupervised classification. 
next week we'll be talking about how to access the accuracy of these classifications and showing some ways of improving the classification. So just a sneak peek in general, um, using more training data uh, improves your classification. Um, next week, we're going to look into uh, inspecting which classes are, you know, not doing so well with the classification. And uh, we can create more training points targeted to those classes to improve the classification, for example. Um, another thing I mentioned a lot, um, sampling the spectral variability of each class is also good practice. Also, there was a question related to this. Adding more predictors can also improve your classification. So we'll, we can experiment with adding NDVI and, and other spectral indices as well for the prediction bands. We could also try, for example, adding more trees in the Vernal Forest classifier and others. Um, there are other ways as well. For example, here we're working with one scene. In some places, uh, we need like composite, for example, annual composite. Uh, I don't know if you're doing like an annual land cover classification or if your area of study is too, uh, too cloudy. We can work with compos composites and sometimes, you know, we have an annual compositor classification is not doing so well because of still um, um, because of you know cloud cover or artifacts on the on the composite. We could try to make increase that that filter date to have you know two years um, to make that composite better. For example, there are different ways of improving um, your classification. And next week we'll be looking to that. Then I also added here the official Earth Engine user guides for the supervised and unsupervised um, classification. And that's it. Thank you.